Hi, this is Peter uh, from Community Works, and I'm back today to give you a little lesson about rhythm. Um, so if you don't know who I am, you can go check out my intro video, and I'll tell you a little bit about my background and what I'm going to be sharing with you all in these lessons. So if you've seen that video already, we can begin. Um, so first, what is rhythm? So most of us probably think of music when we hear the word rhythm, and we'll definitely be talking about that soon. But first, let's try to think about it more broadly. Um, so when I looked up rhythm on Google, um, I got a definition from Wikipedia, which is kind of complicated, but I'll read it out for you. It's um, movement marked by the regulated succession of strong and weak elements or of opposite and different conditions. So basically this means anything that begins and stops regularly over time. So when you go to the doctor, they probably measure your heart rhythm. Um, they'll listen or feel for your pulse and they can tell, um, they can feel your heart pushing around the blood through your body that keeps you, keeps you alive. Um, and when you're relaxed or asleep, your heart will beat rather slowly, usually around 60 beats per minute or one per second. Um, and you can do this yourself. You can feel, feel your wrist, um, or you can feel your, um, pulse in your neck and you can count how many beats of your heart, um, you get in a certain amount of time, like 10 seconds, count how many beats you feel in 10 seconds. Um, but then if you do some exercise, like you run around some outside, or maybe you do some jumping jacks right now, you could stand up and do 10 jumping jacks and then feel your heartbeat again. Is it faster or slower? Um, so there are other aspects of the body that have rhythm as well, right? Um, not just a heartbeat. Also, we have our, our breathing rate. So um, when we're relaxed, just like our heartbeat, it's nice and slow. And then when we do some work or play, we run around outside, um, it gets faster. We need more oxygen from the air for our muscles to do the work. So that's another rhythm that's in our body. Um, one more is what we call circadian rhythm. And that, that word, um, circadian rhythm, is the rhythm of when we're awake versus when we're asleep. Um, so this rhythm is even slower than our heartbeat or our breathing, um, but it's still regular and repeating, right? So that's what makes it a rhythm. So for me, I usually wake up around eight in the morning and then I go to sleep around midnight every night. Um, and that's pretty consistent, even though it might change a little bit. Um, so this rhythm of when we're awake and when we're asleep is connected to another rhythm outside of the body, right? Because normally people, are awake during the daytime and then they go to sleep at night. So as the earth is rotating around on its axis, it's rotating actually at 1000 miles per hour, very fast. Um, so when we look up into the sky, we can see the sun for a certain number of hours and then the sun will disappear behind the horizon. It gets dark and we have nighttime. And then once the earth completes its rotation, we can see the sun again rise in the east and the cycle will repeat itself. And there's even rhythms, other rhythms like this in the universe as well, like the rhythm of the seasons, right? So similarly, this, the earth is revolving around the sun over time, over the course of a year, and different parts of the earth receive more or less sunlight and heat from the sun. And all of the life on Earth is responding to this rhythmic change. So in the winter, we have less daylight and less heat. And all of those lakes and rivers might freeze over. The plants and trees will drop their leaves. The animals will be less active. They might hibernate. Um, and in spring, as it starts warming up and that we get more sunlight, um, those rivers and lakes will melt. The plants will grow new leaves. They'll start to flower. Um, and that's food for animals, which then become more active and they reproduce. And this happens until autumn when 
again, the sun is getting uh, a little less intense, the temperatures decline, and this cycle repeats itself. So rhythms are found all over um, the world, not just in music. Um, they're found inside the body with the heart rate and the breathing um, and, the, and walking, for instance, moving your, your feet. Um, and they're found in the universe and the, around the earth with the cycle of, of life. Um, and anytime we notice a change that repeats itself, we can say that that is a rhythmic, um, a rhythmic change. Life is all about change, so we can find rhythms almost anywhere we look. And I want you to think about um, other rhythms, because there are a lot more than the ones that I just mentioned. So try, if you try to think of other rhythms. Anything in your life that you observe um, around you that seems to change cyclically. Um, so now let's get back to the music. Um, so the specific thing that I'm going to talk about today is rhythm in music and specifically in music notation. Um, so first I just want to say like people have been making music for thousands of years. First, people probably just use their voice to sing. They use their body to clap and to stomp and dance. And then over time, we invented all kinds of different instruments to make, make sounds just for the purpose of making sounds for music. And um, the oldest instrument uh, that we've discovered is a flute. Um, and it was found in Germany, I believe. It was made of animal bone. And it was made at least 35,000 years ago. So people have been making music for at least 35,000 years, but probably way longer. We just don't know because we don't have any, you know, records of it. Um, so relatively recently, though, people started to try to write down music on paper. Why do you think people wanted to write down music? I'm going to leave you with that question, let you think about that. What, what benefit would there be to writing down music? Um, and over several hundred years, um, they created a standardized system, a system that people use all over the world today in order to communicate, to record um, melodies and rhythms um, so that they can share them with, with other people and get people, maybe an orchestra or a bunch of musicians who have never heard the music before because it's never been made before to create um, create that music that someone invented, someone created from their mind. Um, so yeah, I'll just explain it really briefly. Um, and I'm going to bring up uh, my screen here so that you can see um, this. So this is a little uh, music notation software right here. It's called MuseScore. It's actually totally free. So if you're interested in learning it, you can um, search for that, MuseScore, and you can start to write your own music. Um, so it's pretty simple. Um, it's a lot like reading words. We move our eyes from the left side to the right side, and depending on what the note is on uh, the staff, it can either be high, so that's an example of a high note, or low. So when it's, when it's low down here, we also get a low pitch, and we get a higher pitch. Um, but the thing we're going to talk about mainly today is a few different rhythmic values. Um, so before we get into that, I just want to talk about um, pulse. So um, we need to um, like as we read from left to right, as I mentioned, the position of the note where it is on on the staff, it's called that tells us the pitch, whether it's high or low. But then also the shape of the note, that'll tell us when in time we're supposed to play or sing it. So 
music that's written down usually has a constant pulse. Um, and some people call the pulse the beat or the tempo, all different words for the same thing. So I'm going to play a piece of music for you right now. And the best way to understand tempo or beat or pulse is just to listen to music and clap along with it. So I'm going to, again, share uh, a little video here for you. Um, and we're going to listen to this for a second. And I'm going to, I want you to clap along where you think the pulse of music is. And then I'll join in in a second and we should match. It's a summer, what you need to say. Sometimes I write a little song so you don't forget it. Sometimes I write a little song to remember the lyrics. I go, Me, well. That's a quote to my heart. Okay. I go one, six, one, two. Stop. Aquarium. More of this uh, later, but I just wanted to illustrate that that point. Um, the beat. So. Um, so music is more. It's a little bit more complicated than just a series of beats. Um, it usually, music also has what we call a meter. So a meter is just a pattern of loud and soft beats. And people often use numbers to count these beats. So that song that we listened to just now, I'll actually just bring it up again and we can count along with it. That song is in a really common meter that we call 4-4 four, four time. So. I'll just count along. Four torrents. I strike on the box. Four fogels. Pretty flat body has a way. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's what we call four four time. Um, and if we look at the music again, we can see uh, I wrote the word meter right here. And here we have four four. And you'll notice right away that it's expressed or written the same way that we write fractions. So the number four on top of another number four. Um, so um, for the rest of the lesson, we're just going to keep talking about four, four meter um, because that's a really common one and you'll hear it all the time on the radio once you start to hear it, it'll make a lot of sense. Um, so we already learned one new word, actually maybe two new words. We learned pulse, which is also called beat or tempo. And we now we learned meter, which is the pattern of loud and soft beats. Um, and then the next word that we need to know before we can really get into this stuff is the word measure. So, um, when we're looking at a piece of music, and I'll just share the um, this screen again with you, um, you'll notice that there are these lines. These are called bar lines or measure lines. Um, and they're kind of like when you're reading a book and we divide the words up into different sentences and we put a little period at the end. And what this does is it helps us to to make sense of what's written. So it's not just a long stream of information. It's divided up and breaking it up into these smaller segments helps us to read it a little bit more easily. Um, so let's talk about four, four time and what that really means. So um, each measure in four, four time we can see the first note that we have here is a whole note, it's called. Whole, like W-H-O-L-E. So, and we call it a whole note because it takes up the whole measure or the entire measure. Um, and we 
talk about different rhythmic values in the same way that we talk about fractions. So the whole note takes up the whole measure and we can make smaller rhythmic values. Um, and the first smaller rhythmic value that we're gonna talk about is called the half note. So you can see that there. Um, so um, let's, let's look at an illustration here. Um, so here we have uh, a big circle and the big circle is going to represent a cookie. So we got this cookie, we're hungry and we want to eat it. But um, let's say, you know, the whole cookie is a lot like the whole note. So let's say, for instance, that uh, we have a friend and our friend is also hungry. So we have two people that want to share the cookie. And I apologize if this is a little simple, but I want to make sure we're on the same page here. So um, what do we do? We just break the cookie in half, right? So we cut the cookie, break it down, and now one cookie becomes two parts, right? We got one side here for us and one side here for our friend. So similarly in music, when you take the whole note and you split it in half, you get the half note. So we can listen just for a second. I'm going to play. Um, the pulse is around here. Three, four, one, two, three, four. So you'll notice that the whole note gets four beats and the half note gets two each, right? So the half note takes half as much time as the whole note. So just like the cookie that we break in half, we can break the whole note in half into two half notes. Pretty simple. Um, so next, uh, we're going to talk about a pizza. So let's now say that this represents a pizza instead of a cookie and we're hungry but uh one pizza a lot to eat by yourself so let's try splitting it into more pieces um so let's say we have three friends we want to break uh or cut up the pizza into four slices so we would add another slice right here boom and now we have four slices of pizza four nice big slices of pizza we can share this pizza with our three friends um, and when we put all those four pieces together, we reunite the whole pizza. We have that whole pizza again. So um, in music, we, all, we, we say we're splitting that into quarters. Uh, whether we split the pizza into quarters, we can call that quarters too. Um, but in music, we call them quarter notes. Um, another place you might have heard quarter is like the coin, right? Quarter and um, four quarters make up a dollar. So similarly, four quarter notes make up a whole note. So let's listen and we can hear this. It, uh, again, the beat is like one, two, three, four. Okay. So we can hear that four quarter notes two half notes, one whole note, those all take up the same amount of time. And if we were to put them all together, um, it would all equal four beats. Um, so one more, uh, one more little rhythmic value here. Um, we'll go back to our pizza. And now um, we have a few more friends. Uh, so there's a total of eight people now sharing. So we want to get eight slices. So to go from um, four slices to eight slices, we got to cut each slice in half one more time. And we'll do that with our pizza knife here, like so. And one more slice. 
like so. Not perfectly even, but that's okay. Um, and now we can see eight slices here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So now all eight people can eat pizza. And similarly, when we're reading music, we got this other type of note right here, called the eighth note. So just like when we eat our slice of pizza, we're eating one eighth of the pizza. When we play the eighth note, we're playing a note that lasts one eighth the amount of time as the whole note. Okay, so we can listen to this, hear these eighth notes. One, two, three, four. So those notes are a little bit shorter. And you can see how they're written here. Um, we want to try to remember these different notes, the whole note, which doesn't have um, what we call a stem. It's just the circle part, and it's empty. The half note, which is empty, but it has a stem now, this little bit hanging off. Now the quarter note, which is filled in and also has the stem. And then the eighth note, which is both filled in, it has a stem, and it has this other line here connecting them called the bar. Um, so I hope you learned a little bit about how we read music. And maybe when you think about fractions, you think about things like what is one half plus one half, maybe you think about the half note and how two half notes together equal the whole note. Or when you think about how four quarter notes put together equals the whole note, it's like one over four plus one over four plus one over four plus one over four equals four over four or one whole note. Um, so, um, we can now like mix all of these different rhythms together um, and we can create all kinds of interesting rhythms and when if you're if you're interested in um, performing music and learning how to how to play different styles of music one of the best things that you can do is to practice performing these different rhythms a great way to do that is to listen along with a piece of music so with that in mind let's um, look again at this uh, video here I'm gonna start from the beginning again and we can try clapping. Sinatra. Um, rhythm is all around us. It's in our bodies, in our heartbeat, in our lungs, how we breathe. It's in our footsteps, how we move around. It's in nature, um, the rising and the setting sun, the changing seasons. Um, and in music, we use rhythm to coordinate different people um, playing together. And we can use the music notation system, writing down our music, to um, communicate and record different ideas that we have and share them with other people. So we use fractions to describe the different rhythms. Um, so the, the few different fraction words that we talked about were the whole note, the half note, the quarter note, and the eighth note. 
and we can mix these rhythms together to create interesting new ideas. Um, so we learned a bunch of stuff, um, a bunch of new information, and the next step is to practice, right? We need to practice hearing them. So when you hear a rhythm and a piece of music, oh, that is um, a bunch of eighth notes being performed, or maybe it's two quarter notes, two eighth notes, and one quarter note. Um, and we need to practice performing. So the best way to do this is just listen to music, turn on some music, play along with it. You can move your feet and dance, you can clap your hands along with it in different ways, and you can of course sing along. Um, and you can do this to whatever's on the radio, whatever you hear. Um, so I hope this uh, video has been helpful, um, and I'm, I'm still new to uh, you know, video lessons, so I uh, hope you got something out of this and bear with me as I uh, learn to do this as well. So thanks for, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.